Hi everyone, so in today's video I'm going to be installing this Dino Jet kit uh, on the carburetors and taking off the Suzuki RF900. You would do that to get a tad more power out of your motorcycle. Uh, Dino Jet claims that uh, this is going to give you about 5% more power throughout the rev range. So this is going to be a step-by-step -step instructional video uh, showing you how to install this. So without further ado, let's have a look what the kit contains. So that's what it looks like. You can get it directly from Dynojet or on eBay. So let's open the box. Uh, inside there's a plastic box. The first thing you'll see, there's gonna be your little uh, uh, instructions here, showing you all the parts involved in this installation and what to do step by step. You're gonna find some stickers and you're gonna find, and that's quite useful, a little troubleshooting guide in case something went wrong and the motorcycle didn't run the way it should. Uh, those are the possible reasons why you're dealing with the problem, so worth having. And these are the parts. Uh, so the first thing you'll see, you've got your DinoJet needles, uh, which will replace your stock needles. Then you've got your uh, DinoJet springs, which will replace your stock springs. And just for comparison, I'll show you the difference in length, so you can tell straight away those are very different. And you've got your assortment of jets, uh, so they give you the 110 jets, which are even smaller than stock jets, which are 112 and a half, and I'll explain that in a moment. And then they give you 114 jets, and then they give you the biggest one, the biggest set, which is the 118 jets, and this is what we're going to install uh, this time. Um, right, so we've got the parts discussed, let's put this aside for a moment. Okay then, so here we have the carbs, and I would say the step number one would be to remove the welch plugs that cover pilot screws. Now those are located over here. As you can see here, there's a little plug on top of that pilot screw, and that's the only one that I've got left on those carbs. Uh, other three I've already removed, so this one here, this one here, and that one are already removed. So have a look what the difference is. So once again, as you can see, this here, has this little brass factory placed welch plug whereas this one here hasn't got anything this here has the screw exposed so I can put my screwdriver there and I can already start adjusting the screw the DinoJet kit actually contains a little drill bit and you've got to use that drill bit and you, you have to use that drill bit to drill through this plug and then pull it out using the wall screw now the little tip for you is Actually, there's two tips. You've got to go absolutely straight and make sure you're not going sideways because if you go sideways, this is gonna turn into a little disaster. And that's what happened to me with, the, with one of those here and I spent over an hour trying to remove it. So make sure you're going absolutely straight down. And number two, I would say don't go 100% through it. Maybe go up to about 80% of depth of this plug and then screw in one of those in it and once it sits very very tight in the plug basically pull it out using the pliers and I'll show you exactly what I mean by that right so let's start drilling so this is the one I'm gonna be drilling hopefully you'll be able to see everything Okay, very important tip. Try not to go too deep, because if you go all the way through, you will actually drill through the little screw that is underneath it, and that's gonna be a bad day, because then you can't remove the screw. So, have a look what's happened here. Can you see this little hole in there? That means that I'm actually very, very close to getting all the way through. So now, I would say this is a perfect moment to use one of those, to screw it in, and trying to remove it. A 
Okay, it seems like this time it's going to grab it nicely. And as you can see, it did grab it because it's actually turning the welch block all the way around. And let's try to get it out. There we go, folks. It came out. Can you see this? We got it out. It's always a good idea to uh, do the drilling with the float bolts on because um, all those metal filings are kept away from the in inside of the carburetors. You don't want to get any crap inside. So now we can just use some compressed air to blow through it. We've got it nice and clean. And now we can start disassembling the carburetor to put the jet kit in. So let's start from the top. You're going to have to remove the diaphragm cap and always use the right screwdriver. JIS type for Japanese carburetors. You can't go wrong with those. Remove those two screws holding the cap. Watch out, there's going to be spring inside, so go careful with it. There we go, this is your stock spring. Now, let's remove the diaphragm. And let's remove the stock needle. So at the very bottom, you're gonna have this very thin metal washer. Then you're gonna have this white plastic ring. Then at the top, you're gonna have this weirdly shaped plastic ring. And finally, there's gonna be a metal clip, metal C-clip on the needle. So this needs to come off as well. And for that job, you can use a screwdriver and gently pry it. Be careful not to lose it. There we go, that's what it looks like. All right, so we've got the stock parts away. Now, as I mentioned before, DinoJet provides you with this uh, drill. So this is to uh, drill out the welch plugs that will get you the access to pilot screws, as I mentioned before. But also, you see on your uh, throttle slide, you've got three holes. Those two on the side have to be drilled and enlarged to that size. So let's do it now. There we go. And another one. That's what it looks like. These holes are now a bit bigger. So when it comes to installation of DinoJet needle, what they want you to do is this little C-clip for European motorcycles has to go on the groove number four, counting from the top. If you pay attention, you'll see those grooves here. So you count the grooves one, two, three, and four. And for the European motorcycles, this has to go on groove number four. If you live in States, the DinoJet kit for American motorcycles, American RFs, they want you to put this clip on notch number three. We're living in England, I'm going for number four. So that's one, two, three, and four. There we go. I need something hard to go against. There we go. Little click, and I've got it on. And let's just count it once again, making sure this is on groove number four. So it's one, two, three, and four. And then following the instructions from DinoJet. The next one at the bottom, just before, just before the C-clip, will be the plastic ring. The one above the C-clip 
will be this little very thin metal washer and at the very top there's going to be the plastic ring. And how do I know that? Because that's exactly what instruction tells me to do. You see, this is the sequence of assembly. Right, so once we've got all this in the correct order and our slides drilled, we simply put this back on in the slide. There we go. Excellent. So the dyno jet needle is in. All parts in place. Now, we put the piston, or the slide, inside the carburetor. Okay, important. If you have a look what's going on inside here, make sure that the needle goes inside this hole. Like this. You can you see this? This needle has to go inside this hole. There we go, it's in. Okay, now let's just make sure that the diaphragm sits in the groove and it seems like it does and now it's time to install our Dynojet springs have a look at the difference the long ones are the stock springs and the short ones are the Dynojet springs and always let's not forget about those little o-rings here Okay, diaphragm sits in nicely in the groove, we've got the little o-ring on it. Now let's put the spring in. And the good thing is with Dynojet springs, it's actually a lot easier to install them because they're not that long. So now, put the cap on. Making sure we haven't pinched the diaphragm. And let's now put the securing screws in. And another one. There we go then folks. The top side of the carb is done. Let's now invert the carb. So let's take the fault bolts off. So here we have it. This is our main jet here, uh, and this is what we're going to be swapping. And as I mentioned before, Dynojet kit actually gives you three sizes. Uh, let me show you this. It actually gives you three sizes of main jets. So here's the deal: the stock RF900 jet installed by the factory uh, is 112 and a half. And the reason why the Dynojet gives you three sizes is because uh, it depends on what sort of configuration of exhaust and uh, intake you run in your motorcycle. So this jet here is uh, 114. Uh, you would install this uh, if your motorcycle was bone stock, if you had stock exhaust, stock air filter and, and no other changes on your bike. You would then install 114 size jet. This jet here is 118. This is the biggest one. You would install this if your RF had um, aftermarket exhaust can, or a full exhaust system and air filter. Now, you've also got a jet here, which is 110. And it kind of makes no sense because obviously the stock jet is 112 and a half. So the stock jet is actually bigger than this. So why would I give it to you? Well, the reason is some people ride their motorcycles in very, very high altitudes, let's say in mountains. And the higher you are, the less oxygen the air has. So your, your motorcycle is actually effectively being starved of air when you ride it uh, at very high altitudes. So what happens is you get 
air fuel ratio disturbed by it because you have the same amount of fuel provided by 112 and a half jet and less air that's going to mean your bike will run rich and that can cause certain problems so for those people who ride their motorcycles at very high altitudes they provide this smaller jet which is 110 and then you eliminate the problems of rich running at high altitudes having this installed so that's the reason why you've got this particular gizmo here but we're not worrying about that because we're installing the biggest boys which is 118 okay then so um, let's remove the stock 112 jet so for that you're gonna need to hold the jet holder with the spanner size 8 and then turn the jet left here's our jet so we're gonna swap that with this gizmo which is 118 can you see this it should say 118 on it The jet has been installed. Now let's put the float ball on. There we go, and we've got just one more little job to do before it's all finished. So here we have it, this is our pilot screw, and that allows you to adjust the air fuel mixture. So what DinoJet wants you to do is use the flat screwdriver that gets in there and turn it clockwise until it's fully seated so you will feel slight resistance there we go I can't go any further and now from that point they want you to go out two full turns so from that position I'm going half a turn one turn one and a half Two turns and folks that is it that's the whole procedure of installing DinoJet kit on RF900 carburetors obviously I've only done just one carburetor but the process is just the same for each other carb so I'm not gonna make this video an hour long because there's no point nobody's gonna watch it but basically you repeat the process for all the other carbs doing the same thing and you're done install the carbs go for a ride and it should be all good thanks for watching till next time